Hi, I'm James Priest. I'm an honours student here at the University of New South Wales. Aboriginal astronomers have long used the night sky to tell tales of their people. Whether it was for useful tools of hunting, or initiation rites into adulthood, their stories possessed a truly unique characteristic. Take the emu in the sky for example. It is an Aboriginal constellation, but perhaps a bit different from what you might know. It has within it dark clouds. Aboriginal astronomers realised something that it took thousands of years of Western astronomy to realise. These dark clouds are very important. These clouds are dark for a reason. They're collections of dust and gas that are so dense that no light radiation can pass through them. Much like a bottle filled with smoke, if we were to make that smoke thicker and denser, it'd eventually become opaque. But before we can talk about how we can see these clouds if no visible light can pass through them, we need to first discuss the atomic spectra. Take for example, a lamp full of neon gas. If we were to excite that lamp by adding in energy in the form of electricity, then the neon gas becomes excited, and as it relaxes, it releases light. You're probably already familiar with this light as the warm purple glow of a neon gas lamp. Also, if we were to take a molecule with a bond between them, we can actually pump in enough energy to break this bond. It's how we get hydrogen and oxygen gas from water through the process known as hydrolysis. So these clouds block all the light that would have broken apart the bonds between molecules. And this has allowed complex molecules to form and also flourish in these dark clouds. We've gone from thinking that no molecules could have ever existed to finding over 200 different molecular species in the past 100 years. And these range from the simple gases and molecules in the air around us towards the sugars and proteins required for life to exist. We one day hope to find all the required molecules to create, if you will, the molecular soup such that self-replicating organic life can occur. So how do we see these clouds in the night sky if they're completely dark to us? Well first we need to go back to our neon gas light example. You see I've hidden something in that example, and that something is quantum mechanics. Perhaps one of the greatest discoveries of the early 20th century, pioneered by Max Planck, Albert Einstein, as well as many others. You see there was a problem before that with the atom. The atom is made up of a nucleus, which is positively charged, and an electron, which is negatively charged. Now we know opposites attract, so why doesn't the electron fall into the atom and combine to make a single object? Well, what quantum mechanics says is that this electron can only exist as shells, and that to move the electron between shells requires the absorption of energy or the emission of energy. So with our neon gas example, we excited it, which means we took a neon particle we got its electron and we moved it to a higher shell and we waited for it to relax, which is just the reverse process. We're going to wait for it to drop a shell. However, when anything relaxes in an atom, it's always accompanied by the emission of light. For the neon gas example, we only saw purple light. That's because no other colored light emission was allowed. So to make the system a bit more complicated, all we need to do is add a second atom. So take the oxygen gas we breathe in. If you don't remember what it looks like, it looks a bit like a dumbbell with two oxygen atoms on either side and a double bond connecting them. It has all the same electron features moving between shells as the neon gas does. However, it can also rotate and this rotation can store energy. So these rotational speeds can only happen in certain steps. We can only go from one speed to a slower speed and no other speed in between. Now, if you remember our neon gas, if we were to go down a step, we'd have to have an emission of light. Well, we do get an emission of light as we change steps of rotations, but this isn't visible light. It occurs as radio waves. The really cool thing about radio waves is that they can pass through this cloud unimpeded and actually reach us here on Earth. So we as radio astronomers, and you get no points for guessing why we get our name, tune our telescopes to the stations of these molecules. And we have done so far. We've found a bountiful quantity of molecules in these dark cloud regions. So we aim to use the knowledge of the original radio astronomers, the Aboriginals, as well as the telescopes we have in Chile and out here in Australia's outback to point towards these dark clouds and hopefully one day find the molecules required to create life.